So when we talk about learning, it really breaks into these three different domains, cognitive, affective, and psychomotor. So cognitive, that's your thinking. Um, and that's not just uh, kind of knowledge. Knowledge is the base level there of cognitive. It's, it's back to what we were talking about at the beginning, those thinking skills, higher order thinking skills, problem solving, judgment, that type of learning things in that cognitive domain. Affective, uh, that's feeling. And this one's a kind of a sense of uh, whether something is important to you and to learn essentially how something is important, why something is important, and to change your kind of value system to place value on, to learn to place some value on something that you may not have before. And then lastly, psychomotor, that, that doing those physical tasks, really that, that is the portion that's just flying the, air, the aircraft, whether that's a helicopter, fixed wing, whatever it is, putting those inputs in, getting the desired results, making uh, the aircraft go where you want it to go. And within each of those three domains of learning, we have these four levels, kind of gross levels of learning wrote at the bottom where we're really just you know a, the ability to to recall something whether that's a knowledge whether that's a, a procedure a physical procedure in that kind of psychomotor domain without really any understanding of the why or the how just i know step one step two step three that moves up into that understanding level where now you actually uh, not just know the procedures, but you understand the why, you understand the how, you're not just uh, following it cookbook style as it were. You're, uh, you're in the kitchen improvising, you're mixing ingredients, you're, you're understanding why things uh, turn out the way they do. Application then, uh, this is that, that next level up from understanding where we're taking our understanding and we're putting it to use. Uh, we've now understood the how, the why. This is that level where a student is able to uh, see a situation, maybe something that they haven't encountered before, but because they have that understanding and now because they have that uh, application level of learning, that they're able to create a solution to a problem that they maybe haven't been presented before. And then correlation is, that's really being able to take different pieces of information, different items that they have been taught and tie them together. Something, uh, you know, something from over here, something from over there uh, that, that maybe weren't taught as uh, things that go together as pieces of information that are, are uh, paired or that are normally used together, but that they can take it and say, I can see how in this situation, um, it, you would want to use this piece from over here, this piece from over there, that piece from over there, and put together uh, maybe a solution nobody's even thought of before. Create uh, a new approach, a new maneuver, a new piece of knowledge, a new way of thinking about something. And that's, that, that's the mountaintop, as it were, right? You're trying to get your student to that correlation level where they're able to kind of see the big picture and apply concepts in ways maybe you hadn't even thought of before. So uh, for those levels uh, with in the cognitive domain, at the bottom there, it, that's knowledge, right? Knowledge is the lowest level of the cognitive domain. That's that rote level. Comprehension, right now we're moving up. Comprehension and application is into that understanding uh, level. Um, and then those knowledge, comprehension, application, that was where we were talking about the beginning. That's kind of your part task trainer level uh, where it's just how do I approach a scenario? How do I see something and execute either a physical maneuver with the aircraft or essentially make a basic judgment about uh, selecting a type of approach, selecting a type of gun pattern, orienting the aircraft relative to a survivor, um, judging the winds when picking up a vert rep load, all of these kinds of things. But then this, uh, you know, this, these top three, that is those higher order thinking skills as we build up, right? Analysis, synthesis, evaluation. And that evaluation is that top, that mountaintop for the cognitive domain exercise of learn judgment, of being able to take uh, those things, those uh, relationships, those uh, facts across the uh, different domains and apply them uh, in a new context. After cognitive, we get into affective. So this is where we're talking about uh, values, feelings, how you see something or feel about it. And so at the very bottom level, right, you can see this idea of willingness to pay attention. That's the, the baseline level. Is your student willing to listen to you, to take these ideas on board? Is it something that they are uh, 
willing to participate in. And then we get up to reacts voluntarily or complies and you think, okay, well, any student, uh, you know, a professional aviator in a squadron should be willing to pay attention, should react voluntarily and comply. But it isn't always necessarily the case if your student doesn't value what they're learning, if you haven't, like we talked about at the beginning, if you haven't been able to convince them of the why or help them understand the reasoning, um, then they're not really making progress on this uh, effective side uh, domain of learning. And then as you get up, you get into acceptance, rearrangement of value system, and incorporates value into life. And this is where your, your student is taking on board the things we value uh, as an organization. And this can be everything from transparency, so standing up at AOMs and doing there I was, uh, you know, copying to mistakes that you've made, right? That is a, a huge piece of our institutional culture is that we take responsibility for things, whether they went well or whether they went poorly, and we expect professional aviators in the naval aviation community to own up to mistakes and then that it's a, a learning process that people don't pile on and, and beat on. You, you let someone present, say, to an AOM, a, there I was on a mistake maybe that they made, and that the whole room is willing to take that on board, offer some advice, and try to take it as an opportunity to prevent that from happening to someone else or share that information uh, with someone else who might need it. So things like that, those types of values, aren't necessarily things that students come in predisposed to, and hopefully that flight training process from VTs, HTs, FRS to the fleet has helped prepare them for that, has helped uh, let them know that those are our values, that is how we approach things. Um, but whether it's just you know being a professional aviator, taking each flight seriously, putting value uh, in the type of training that you do, um, or safety culture, whatever it is, there are affective aspects of our uh, profession that you want to be teaching students. And this is probably one of those things that gets neglected the most within our community of people looking at you know what types of stuff are we teaching people understand teaching the knowledge and the thinking they understand teaching the psychomotor those physical skills but the affective portion the cultural portion um, the values and the feelings are, are an important part of it as well especially if you are in an instructor role in the squadron the last of the domains is psychomotor and this is a, those physical skills whether that's uh, maneuvering the aircraft or responding to an input, executing an emergency procedure properly. And at the bottom, we were really just talking about awareness of sensory stimulus, uh, relating to cues and performing as demonstrated. That's that very baseline level. Uh, back when we were talking about, you know, turning perceptions into insights, having those perceptions to begin with. Now, as we move up, we start to see performs simple acts well. And that should be really where you're getting students new in the squadron, right? That they have uh, been through various training commands. They're able to perform simple acts in the aircraft uh, with skill. And what you're hoping to do is, is increase that skill level as well as teach them all the places and the ways in which they're going to employ those skills. Then you're trying to build them up to the skill perf skillful performance of complex acts. Now we're getting into kind of fleet application. This idea that what we do is fairly complex. Uh, everything from executing a coordinated search and rescue operation overseas, over land, um, working a, a big vert rep day, uh, employing in an SUW scenario, executing a personnel recovery. These are all very complex acts and uh, sometimes require pretty complex maneuvering of the aircraft. That's where you want to get to as you're building up. But then this is that top level. This is that kind of mountaintop is, you know, modifies for special problems. This is being able to take what they've learned about the aircraft, modify those techniques and apply them for a situation they've never been in before um, or create something new. Uh, imagine or create a maneuver that no one's really seen before that fits, that works, where they're able to uh, analyze the relationships and understand the outcomes of specific inputs and say, you know, I think we should be doing it this way or that way. And, and that is what moves the community forward is those people who are able to get to that level and think of new and better ways to approach all the problems that that we encounter in the fleet.